Hello everyone, welcome back. Estamos aqui juntos mais uma vez nesse sábado para a gente poder continuar aí. O né? que, que a gente vai ver hoje? Today we are going on to lesson 23, pages 94 to 97. We're going to be talking about always young. What does it mean to be always young? Well, we will see. Então, let's go with the warning. Já pega o livro, gente, já vai olhando aí, já dá uma lida. Já dá uma pesquisada para não ficar voando aí no Words in Action, tá? Para a gente poder seguir junto. All right? Let's go then. Today we will see uh, warm up, words in action, talk time, useful expressions, grammar file, speak up, listening and talking, talk time, listening and reading practice, fun time, and listening for understanding. Beginning with the question what does it mean to be always young? Yay. O que, que é always young? Always young, sempre jovem, right? What, what is it to you? O que, que vocês acham que é ser always young? Is it your skin? Is it your mind? Vocês acham que se a gente agir como jovem, a gente vai sentir sempre jovem? Maybe. That's a nice discussion to have. Continuando aí, let's go to warm up. Onde a gente tem algumas coisinhas estranhas. Vamos ver. Here are odd things that people eat around the world. Every culture invents a food that is weird or disgusting to outsiders. Ou seja, toda cultura tem aquela coisa que não é muito legal para quem vem de fora. Por exemplo, uma coisa que a gente adora. But people outside Brazil hate is feijoada. A gente adora feijoada, but people outside of Brazil don't really like it. Tá? Feijoada é um negócio bem próprio nosso, que não é todo mundo que gosta, não. Ok? Então, vamos lá. Repete comigo, gente, essas palavrinhas aí. Tripe. Tripe. Octopus. Octopus. Monkey brains. Monkey brains. Fried crickets. Fried crickets. Sheep's eyes, sheep's eyes, bird's nest soup, bird's nest soup, frog legs, frog legs, and blood sausage, blood sausage. Se vocês tiverem ido pesquisar isso aí, né, a gente consegue ver que tripe é tripa, a gente meio que come, tem buchada, né, de, tipo, tem gente que come tripe, I guess. Octopus é aquele bichinho ali em cima, né? São polvos, né? Monkey brains, cérebros de macacos. Fried crickets, é, grilo frito. Sheep's eyes, olhos de ovelha. Bird's nest soup, é uma sopa de ninho de pássaro. Sim, eles pegam um ninho de pássaro e fazem uma sopa, né? Usando os ovos, whatever. Uh, frog's legs, é, perna de, de é, de sapo. Eu não comi, meu irmão já comeu. Meu irmão me disse que tastes like chicken, tem gosto de galinha. And blood sausage, que é uma salsicha específica feita com sangue. Né? Ele, ele é assado e aí ele endurece e aí você faz uma salsicha. If you were starving to death, which of these would you eat? Não tem mais nada para comer. Only this. E aí? Which one would you choose? This is really hard. I, if I had to choose, I would say frog's legs. People told me it tastes like chicken. Né? Se tem gosto de galinha, I'll believe it. <laughs> Moving on to uh, words in action. Então, vamos ouvir aí, prestando atenção, tá? Words in action, vamos ouvir e repetir. Let's go. Book 3. Lesson 23. Words in action. Wrinkles. Wrinkles. Pimples. Pimples. Freckles. Freckles. Breast. Breast. Makeup. Makeup. Smooth. Smooth. Handle. Handle. Enlargement. Enlargement. Lift. Lift. Handle. Handle. Potter. Potter. Jar. Jar. Squirrel. 
squirrel. Somewhat. Somewhat. Loose. Loose. Nuts. Nuts. Request. Request. Dice. Dice. Weird. Weird. Bones. Bones. To gather. To gather. Primitive verb anyway. To gather. Gathered. Gathered in the past. Gathered. Gathered in the participle. To drop. To drop. Dropped. 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 Dropped as well. All the verbs today are regular. To delight. To delight. Delighted. 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 Delighted again. To starve. To starve. Starved. 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 Starved again. Então, várias palavrinhas aí. Vamos lá passar aqui por elas rapidinho, né? Vamos ver que a gente tem aí é, wrinkles, que são rugas, pimples, que são... É, por exemplo, eu tô com uma pimple bem aqui, né? Pimples são é, espinhas. Uh, freckles, que são sadas, tipo aquelas que tem gente tem na cara. Breasts, são peitos. Makeup, maquiagem. Smooth, é uma coisa lisa, uma coisa reta. Handle, seria uma é, manivela ou alguma coisa que a gente segura. Tá? Enlargement, aument, aumento. Lift, levantar, tá? é quando você levanta algo. Ou, no Reino Unido, também é como a gente chama elevators. Okay? Elevators são lifts. Handle, again, que se eu não me engano, a gente pode também chamar a asinha da xícara, a gente também chama de handle. Potter é um oleiro. It's a person who deals in pottery, cerâmica, tá? Então, quem mexe com cerâmica é oleiro, é o homem que faz jarros e bules e coisas do tipo com cerâmica. Uh, jar, jarra. Uh, squirrel, é um esquilo. Somewhat, seria algo mais ou menos. Normalmente, somewhat é usado antes de adjetivos. I am somewhat tired, eu estou mais ou menos cansado. Loose é algo que está solto. Ou como a gente fala no Nordeste, o falote, tá? quando a coisa não está apertada. Nuts podem ser nozes. Request é um pedido. Dice, dados. Tá? Dado de jogo de 1 a 6. Né? D6 é no plural, dados. Weird é algo estranho. Bones são ossos. To gather, juntar. To drop, derrubar. And to delight, deleitar-se. Ah, você gosta muito de uma coisa, você deleita-se. And to starve, morrer de fome, tá? Estar morrendo de fome. Como aquela moça ali, eu acho que ela tá com muita fome. Ela tá pensando numa, numa coxinha de frango. All right, let's go on to our first talk time, uh, where we have a few questions there. Number one, what does a potter do? What does a potter do? A potter does pots. A potter does pots. He makes pots, okay? He doesn't do pots, he makes pots, okay? So, a potter makes pots. Ele faz potes e jarras, coisas do tipo. Number two. Did you ever have a pimple on your face? Yes, I think I have one right now. It's kind of ugly. Sorry about that. Number four. What are some ways that you can use to prevent wrinkles? O que, que a gente pode fazer para prevenir rugas? One, you can always stay hydrated, always drink a lot of water, maybe some kind of cream, maybe. Uh, there are exercises to stimulate elasticity in your skin. Então, sorrir muito, ficar com raiva, né? tipo, forçar os músculos para criar elasticidade na pele. Maybe that helps. Uh, number five, have you ever had... Freckles or dots removed. Então, você já teve o que? Sardas ou é, sinais. Dots são pontinhos removidos. I have not. What about you guys? Eu sei que algumas pessoas têm. Number six. Don't you think it's okay for men to wear makeup? Yes, and I should have worn makeup for this. Tá, tá muito feio essa minha testa aqui. Eu deveria ter usado uma maquiagemzinha. Para mim, maquiagem é completamente ok. Number seven, 
Do you think telephone calls are somewhat expensive in Brazil? Absolutely. Our phone calls are really expensive. I mean, we're one of the only countries in the world who have uh, cell phones with more than one SIM card. A gente tem mais de um chip. Isso é o que só a gente tem, esse negócio de promoção, de ligar para um, ligar para outro, em vários lugares do mundo. Uma ligação é uma ligação, não importa para quem, e elas normalmente têm preços muito baratos. A gente paga bastante por serviço de telefonia. Number 8. Do you consider yourself lucky? Me, I considered myself lucky, but not in a regular sense. Eu não sou sortudo no sentido de, sei lá, de eu ir jogar, de eu ir jogar, sei lá, Poker e ganhar no poker. Não. Eu me considero sortudo de eu ter acesso a bastante coisa. Tá? De eu ter nascido num lugar bom. Eu tenho, eu tenho sorte de, de, de estar onde eu estou. Uh, number nine. Are you lucky when you play dice games? Você é sortudo quando joga jogos de dados? It depends. Costumava jogar RPG. Já tirei um, já tirei 20. Depende, né? Number 10, what does the old saying, a penny saved is a penny earned mean? Então, a penny, isso é um ditado antigo, tá? A penny saved, a penny é um centavo, one cent. Uh, and a penny saved, ou seja, um centavo poupado, is a penny earned. É um centavo ganho. Which means that when you save that penny, it's yours. More than if you lose it. Ok? Então, se você poupa seus centavos, no final você vai ter mais centavos. Isso pode gerar muito mais dinheiro. Né? Imagine quantos centavos não se perdem só porque as pessoas simplesmente jogam fora. Right? So that's what it means. A penny saved is a penny earned. If you save a penny today, you have one more penny tomorrow. All right? Very well. Let's move on to useful expressions. Where we begin with to be kind of. Tá? To be kind of, lembra do somewhat que a gente falou agora no Words in Action? To be kind of is very similar. Tá? It's similar to our mais ou menos, ok? Então, na frase aí a gente tem, uh, I'm kind of weary today. Então, weary is the same as tired. So, essentially, what we're doing is saying the same as that guy up there. I'm kind of tired. And that's the thing, kind of is a way that we use to say uh, kind of. And you may see kinda sometimes, which is how some Americans, some Canadians say it. I am kind of tired. Okay. Very well. Um, be as it may. Be as it may, I can't take your place on Friday. Uh, imagine you work with someone and they are saying they have an important uh, event. They have to go and they want you to cover for them, to take their shifts, to work in their place. Uh, and then you say, be as it may, I can't take your place. Seja como for, ok? Não importa quais são as condições, it can't happen, não pode ser. Be as it may, seja como for. To stand for, UN stands for United Nations. Right? Então, to stand for é o que a gente fala quando você está falando de significar, normalmente, usually when you're talking about acronyms. O que, que é um acronyms? An acronym, let me go back here, an acronym is uh, UN, or whenever you have laser, laser is an acronym, laser is an acronym, each letter means something different, so it's not just laser, it's supposed to be L-A-S-E-R, laser, okay, this is what an acronym is, is when you have different letters, uh, meaning Each means a different word. Okay, that is an acronym. So, what does UN stand for? UN stands for United Nations. U, United and Nations. In Portuguese, significa, right? You have an acronym and then the full name. And then last, we have so to speak. What is so to speak? He's kind of crazy, so to speak. Uh, When you don't want to say something, you want to soften the blow, you want to say in a, in a softer kind of way, you say so to speak at the end. Por assim dizer. Right? He is kind of crazy, so to speak. Ele é meio maluco, por assim dizer. O que você está realmente dizendo é que a pessoa é muito louca. Né? Você está usando aí um eufemism. Um eufemismozinho para dizer que 
A pessoa é mais do que realmente você está dizendo. Essa é a ideia do so to speak. Alright? Very well. Moving on. Let's go to a grammar file. Então, pega aí o grammar file, gente. Dá uma olhadinha para a gente poder ver o causative. O que, que é o causative? O causative é exatamente quando você faz alguém fazer alguma coisa. Ok? Então, in, in English, you don't make someone do something, you have them do something. Tá? É equivalente ao nosso pedir mandar para alguém fazer alguma coisa. Ok? Então, number one, first up there, we have Dr. Smith had his nurse take the patient's temperature. And Dr. Smith had his nurse take the patient's temperature. Na tradução, Dr. Smith fez com que, ou pediu, ou ordenou que sua... Uh, enfermeira é, tomasse a temperatura do paciente. Ah, então, aí ele foi uma ordem, foi um pedido, foi algo que ele fez com que ela fizesse. Next we have, please have your secretary fax me the information. Por favor, peça a sua secretária, mande a sua secretária, ok? Fax me the information. Para os mais novos aí, tá? Fax era um negócio que a gente usava antes da internet para enviar documentos, tá? Você enviava pelo telefone, fax. Né? Então, ele está mandando a secretária enviar os documentos por fax, né? informação. No terceiro aí, a gente tem... I am going to have Peter try to fix my computer. Eu vou pedir ao Peter fazer com que o Peter conserte meu velho computador. And last one, he had her blush. Ele fez com que ela blush, com que ela ficasse com vergonha, vermelhinha, blush. Tá? Então, a gente sempre vai ter o have... A pessoa, o sujeito e o verbo, né? Have fulaninho do something. Então, e o verbo sempre na forma padrão dele, é similar ao infinitivo, tá? Take, fax, fix. Não é porque é Peter, terceira pessoa, que eu vou botar fixes, né? Eu fiz com que o Peter ajeitasse meu computador, ok? Então, a forma é essa sempre. Have, a pessoa e o verbo. Tranquilinho, gente? Very good. It's time for... Speak up. Então, vamos lá para o speak up, prestando atenção para a gente poder repetir aí, ok? Vamos ouvindo e repetindo juntos. Let's go! Book 3. Lesson 23. Speak up. What's the matter with him? What's the matter with him? I'm not sure, but he seems kind of worried. I'm not sure. But he seems kind of worried. He didn't win the election. He didn't win the election. Be as it may, he was a great statesman. Be as it may, he was a great statesman. What does UN stand for? What does UN stand for? UN stands for United Nations. UN stands for United Nations. How was the party? How was the party? The party was kind of weird, so to speak. The party was kind of weird, so to speak. Então, aí ela está dizendo a festa provavelmente foi muito estranha. Tá? Ela só não está falando. Shall we go? Shall we go? We're late. We're late. Give me a moment to gather my things. Give me a moment to gather my things. What did the family do? What did the family do? All the family gathered around the piano. All the family gathered around the piano. What happened to the bottle? What happened to the bottle? The bottle dropped and broke. The bottle dropped and broke. How is the water level? How is the water level? The water level has dropped considerably. The water level has dropped considerably. What can you do with wet sand? What can you do with wet sand? I can shape wet sand into a castle. I can shape wet sand into a castle. Put those books on that shelf. Put those books on that shelf. Will that shelf sustain the weight of all those books? Will that shelf sustain the weight of all those books? She sang beautifully. She sang beautifully. Her singing delighted everybody. Her singing delighted everybody. Dinner's ready. Dinner's ready. What's for dinner? I'm starving. What's for dinner? I'm starving. I have no wrinkles now. 
I have no wrinkles now. Have you had your wrinkles removed? Have you had your wrinkles removed? How was the road? How was the road? The road was smooth. The road was smooth. What was his reaction when he saw her? What was his reaction when he saw her? He was somewhat surprised to see her. He was somewhat surprised to see her. I'll get the coffee pot. I'll get the coffee pot. Be careful with the coffee pot. The handle's loose. Be careful with the coffee pot. The handle is loose. Very good. Very good. Let's move on to listening and talking. Então a gente tem um textinho aí. Time for a lift. Então vamos ouvir, prestar atenção e decifrar o que está acontecendo. Ok? Let's go! Book 3. Lesson 23. Listening and talking. Time for a lift. In her early 50s, Sylvia is becoming more and more bothered about wrinkles in her face. She wants to have plastic surgery to improve imperfections so she can feel better about herself. Her husband, Mike, on the other hand, is kind of reserved about it. Thinking about having a plastic surgery, darling. You mean like a breast enlargement? Why not, darling? Look at my eyes. They're puffy. And my eye bags, they're dark and full of dark lines and circles. And these wrinkles on my forehead, and these pumps here and there on my face, I really need a surgery to improve all these imperfections. I do think that's not necessary. Maybe a makeup would be enough. I really miss the old days when my skin felt so baby smooth. I don't know. Nobody has to sustain youth forever. You wouldn't do a plastic surgery, would you? Damn, right I would. I'm getting older and uglier. I want you to know that I think you are attractive just the way you are. I would suggest you just get a facial cleaning. Be as it may, I'm ready for a lift. I'm even thinking of having the rest done too. Wow, she's even thinking about doing the rest, about having the rest done. Yay, what's happening there? She wants to have plastic surgery. She says she has uh, puffy eyes, so her eyes are puffing out, are a little puffy. She also says that she has eye bags, which is when you have these things under your eyes, when they get dark. She's also talking about bumps here and there. Ela tem é, sinais aí, ela tem tipo, é, partes inchadas no rosto. And she really needs a surgery to improve all those imperfections. Ela quer melhorar todas as imperfeições. He said this, it's not necessary. Uh, he says she should just, you know, use some makeup, do facial cleaning. But I guess she's ready for it. Damn right. She wants to uh, do everything. She wants to fix everything. Well, that's a matter of opinion. Some people want to do surgery. And if they do, I'm not the one who's going to stop them. Uh... And my question for you guys is, what advice would you give to an older person who wants to feel younger? Well, the first thing, at least, that I would say is act younger. Act like you did when you were younger. It's not just because we are older that we have to stop being nice, that we have to stop liking fun. We can still do those things. At least that's what I think. I, people tell me I look younger than I am. And I love that. Very good. Let's go on to talk time. Talk time number two with the first question. Question number one. Do you worry about getting older? Do you worry about getting older? Hmm. If it was me, I, I, don't, I don't think I worry too much. Mostly because I, I never really feel like I'm getting old. I just... I just do what I like to do and I play like I want to play. I don't really uh, worry about it too much. Number two, until what age would you like to live? If I could, I would live forever. I don't care. Eu sei que tem todas aquelas coisas sobre as pessoas uh, vindo para sempre. Blah, blah, blah. I would live forever. I would like to choose the moment when I get to die. <laughs> Eu sei que não é possível. I know. But... That's me. I would like to live for a long, long time. Number three. 
Do you mind being asked your age? If there is no judging, yes. Some people do judge. Algumas pessoas julgam você pela sua idade. As long as people don't do that, I am fine. I am 30, by the way. I am 30 years old. I am 30 years old. That's me. I am 30 years old. Okay. Very well. Moving on. Uh, number four. Some people say that youth is a state of mind. Do you agree? Do you agree that youth is a state of mind? I, I, I would say yes. I know people who are, you know, older, 70s, 80s, who act like they're 20 and they are just the greatest. I have students who are that age and they are amazing because they act younger and they feel younger because of that. And number five, would you have a plastic surgery to improve imperfections? If I had some money, maybe, if it was something that I couldn't change by myself. Por exemplo, eu não sou muito fã de, sei lá, implante no, no bumbum, nas pernas, nos braços. I would just work out. Eu iria malhar. Mas se for, por exemplo, alguma coisa no rosto, ou para algumas mulheres, é, silicone, essas coisas todas. Se for coisa que a gente não consegue mudar naturalmente, if it makes you feel better, eu sou da, eu sou da filosofia de que you do what makes you feel better. Se você se sente melhor, do it. Let's go on to uh, listening and reading practice. Why is it called a piggy bank? Let's take a listen. Vamos ouvir aí e ver why that is happening. Listening, reading and practice. And let me press play real quick and go. Book three. Lesson 23. Listening and reading practice. Why piggy bank? Why do people, mainly children, save their coins in a piggy bank? According to one theory, during the Middle Ages, various household wares such as dishes, pots, and jars were made of a type of clay called pig. When people could save some coins, they would drop it into one of their clay jars. They called this their piggy bank, something like a clay bank. Hundreds of years later, the word pig meaning a kind of clay, was forgotten. When English potters in the 19th century received requests for pig banks, they understood pig banks, so they produced banks in the shape of a pig. Another theory is that in Germany and surrounding countries, the pig was a symbol of good luck. Hence, keeping money in a piggy bank would bring good fortune. Very nice. So we have some different theories about why piggy banks are named piggy banks. And one of them was that a type of clay that was used to make banks was pig. That's why this little piggy over here is saying he used to be made a pig. Because he was made with a pig kind of clay. And my question for you is, do you save your cents for a rainy day? What does it mean, do you save your cents for a rainy day? Do you save your money for when you need it? Or do you spend your whole money right away? This is an expression. A rainy day is a day when you don't have money, a day when you're in need. So, do you save your money? I have some, at least me, I, I save some money. I don't have that much money saved, but I do. I have some money. All right. Very well. Let's go on to... It's time for fun time. Let's have some fun. Question number one. Question number one. How many dots are there in total on one die? Real quick here. We're supposed to, uh, when it's only one, we say die. Okay, this is one die. Tá? Um dado, we say die. When we have more than one, when it's plural, then we say dice. Dice, two or more. When it's only one, it's a die. Okay, die, dice. So, how many dots are there total in one die? Mm -hmm. There are a total of 21 spots on a die. Very well. For number two. What starts with T 
ends with T and has T in it. It's a little bit of a riddle. I'll give you time to think. It starts with a T, ends with a T, and has T in it. We are talking about a teapot. A teapot starts with T, ends in T, and has T in it. T that you drink. Ah, did you get that one? Number three. Question number three. What is glass made from? Glass is made of silica, sand. If you melt sand, yes, sand like the one you find at the beach. If you melt it, if you melt it, you get glass. Next one, question number four. What country is called the land of the rising sun? The land of the rising sun. We are talking about Japan. That's supposed to be the flag of Japan. And I don't know if you guys know this, but rising sun is literally the name of the country. Okay. Japan in Japanese is called Nihon. Nihon. And this means rising sun. Okay, if you look, uh, if you look at the symbols of Nihon of Japan, it means rising sun. So it's the land of the rising sun, the terra do sol nascente. Next question number five, we go on to what does U N O stand for? We're not talking about the game Uno Uno. No, we're talking about U N O. What does it stand for? U N O means United Nations office. That's what UNO means. Question number six. What is the nickname of New York City? New York City is known as the Big Apple. I don't know why. There's a story there that I'm not sure, but it's known as the Big Apple. And next one we have uh, number seven. What year did the Berlin Wall come down? This was right before I was born and the Berlin Wall came down in 1989 in German. It was the wall that divided German between West and East. All right, very well. Moving on to listening for understanding. Let's write down the race's ability. Let's take a listen and Book write them three. down. Lesson 23, listening for understanding. Listen and write them down. I have a talent for languages. Besides English, I speak Portuguese and French. I've always been pretty good at learning to play instruments. I can play the guitar, the violin, and the keyboard. I think my best ability is being persistent. Everything I start, I finish. Ooh, very well. She's a persistent person. Vamos ouvir de novo, tá? E aí vocês colocam aí. Let's go. Let me just set this over here. Let's see. I have a talent for languages. Besides English, I speak Portuguese and French. So she has a talent for languages. Besides English, she speaks Portuguese and French. I've always been pretty good at learning to play instruments. She has always been pretty good at learning to play instruments. So the guitar, drums, instruments, musical instruments. I can play the guitar, the violin and the, the keyboard. The, oh, the, not the drums. The violin and the keyboard. So she can play guitar, the violin, and the keyboard. I think my best ability is being persistent. Everything I start, I finish. And she thinks her best ability is being persistent. Whatever she starts, she finishes. Wow, that's one dedicated person. Very good. Did you guys get it? Did you write it down? Very good. That's it for today's lesson. Let's just review real quick. Today, we saw warm-up, words in action, talk time, useful expressions, grammar file, speak up, listening and talking, talk time, listening, reading practice, fun time, and listening for understanding. Uh, next time, we'll go on to lesson 24. Happy day! Uh, just a few reminders once again. Stay tuned for the instructions from Sahia. Remember to do your homework because it's counting as attendance. Very good. This is it for today. This is me, Mr. Victor, signing out. I will see you soon on Lesson 24. Have a great one. Bye-bye.